Good evening and a very warm welcome to all of you. It's a great pleasure to have you all here for the final global debate in our project 10 years of urban age. We organize this jointly by the Alfred Housen Society, which I represent, and LSE Cities. And let me say a word about ourselves. We are the International Forum of Deutsche Bank, and we are founded in memory of the assassinated former CEO and philosopher Alfred Terhausen. And what we want to do is to promote the exchange of ideas and examine the key issues of our time. We like to say that we look for traces of the future in the present. One, of course, of the key issues is urbanization. Our mega cities today are microcosms of all the big issues of our time, be it climate change, scarcity of resources, energy, infrastructure, social justice, social cohesion, everything. And if we want to shape the future, you have to shape the cities. And this is what we're trying to help tackling through the Urban Age program. Now, for 10 years, Urban Age has been investigating spatial and social dynamics of cities. And we have organized 13 conferences in 13 different mega cities around the world. And now, during the past events, the past 10 days, we have thanked each other profusely. Everybody has thanked LSE cities, but I haven't. So let me say thank you, Ricky, thank you, Philip, thanks the whole team for what you have done with us and for us in the last 10 years, and especially what you are going to do with us in the coming years. Now, the goal of the global, global debate series has been to discuss five core themes which have been the focus of the research and the debate of urban age since 2005. For instance, Nick Stern, Karen Sito, and Bruce Katz discussed the role that cities can play in confronting climate change. Juan Clos, Alejandro Aravena, and others looked at the role of planning and architecture in steering urban growth. Saskia Sassen made a passionate statement on the new patterns of ownership and its negative impacts on cityness. And Norman Foster presented how infrastructure can be used to improve the quality of life in cities. But as you can imagine, it doesn't end here. In fact, the plans for the upcoming year once again underline the role that the urban age has played and will continue to play in informing the international discourse. Urban Age will curate a pavilion as well as host an Urban Age conference at next year's Biennale, the Architectural Biennale in Venice, and it will organize a session at Habitat 3 in Quito on the relationship between public and private spaces. But let's turn to tonight. Tonight, I have the incredible pleasure to welcome three people who have shaped the ideas over the years. We have Richard Sennett, who will be introduced like Suketo Meta later on, but let me say a personal word. Richard has been the, I would say, the spiritus rector of the whole enterprise he constantly has infused us with new ideas, and we count on him in the future. He's been with us for 10 years. So has Suketo Meta. And when I first read the book Bombay Maximum City, after having lived seven years in India, for the first time I understood that a city is not brick and mortar, that the city is an ever ongoing epic Shakespearean saga of people, of tragedy, happiness, and life. And finally, the chair tonight, Dame Tessa Jowell. I have had the chance to learn from her, to admire her when she was Secretary for Culture. But her special contribution to Urban Age was as Minister for the Olympics. 
because afterwards we did an Urban Age conference in Rio about the question, what does a mega event like Olympics do to a city, to the social cohesion of a city? And if the Rio Olympics will be a success, then it's due to her. If there won't be a success, it's because they haven't heeded the advice. So, so with that, Tessa, over to you. Thank you.